1230. All right, let her rip. All right, welcome in everybody. Uh, we're gonna get started kicking off this half day of cooling environments tracks. Um, so this will be, Steve Mills is joining us, IC rep for cooling environments, and we'll be giving an overview of that project as a whole. Um, and then I will be diving into the cold plate sub project overview. Um, Real, I don't know if you want to take this this no, no, intro. So, so off the top here, so I'm Jordan Johnson, Cold Plate Sub Project Lead with Intel. Um, Sean Sivapollin is the Cooling Environments Project Lead with OCP. Uh, he cannot make it today, and so Steve Mills, our Cooling Environments Incubation Committee, is going to be giving that overview. Yep. Thank you. So thanks everybody for joining us. It's uh, definitely a very exciting time to be in this particular space. Uh, about five years ago, a little bit over five years ago, I was talking with Bill Carter, who was the CTO of OCP at the time, and uh, we decided that we should really start getting uh, the industry aligned um, around these needs in cooling, which um, were growing very rapidly, and the industry could definitely benefit from some collaboration. Um, so since then, we've seen a huge amount of growth in this space. So. The Cooling environment pro uh, Environments Project, just this one project, has so many work streams and work products that we're generating. We were, were actually larger than all of OCP was in 2019, so just this project. So that, that kind of gives you an idea of the amount of, of uh, work and uh, collaboration that this team has really put together over the last uh, five years, which has been uh, phenomenal. Um, and another kind of interesting thing that I, I saw, um, for those of you who got to see the keynotes, um, last year was the very first time, and I believe it was Intel that mentioned in the keynote that uh, liquid cooling was gonna be important and that we should really be working on that. And then the, the keynotes from this year, um, I believe it was mentioned almost every one of them. There was only one that didn't mention the fact that uh, liquid cooling was going to be important. So obviously uh, it's just finally come around where this is a, a recognition that this is critical to the industry being able to move forward very quickly. So as you can kind of see up here, these are the OCP core tenants. These are not specific to cooling environments. This is what we're all focused on. Um, Everything that we do is is graded against these criteria. Everything that we that we output um, as we go forward. So I just want to thank the the team for all the work that they've been doing over the last five years. Um, this is a kind of a breakdown of the different projects. So we have uh, five different. Uh, work streams inside of the cooling environment project or sub projects inside of the uh, cooling environment project. So you can see door heat exchangers, cold plate immersion, uh, advanced cooling facilities, which we also call ACF, and then heat reuse. So um, we have a day and a half of talks, um, half a day today and a full day tomorrow um, covering these five sub projects. And while I'm up here, um, we have been growing quite a bit lately, and we need even more help from the community if we want to continue to grow at the pace that we're growing at. So we have an opening right now uh, for a co-lead along with Sean to help drive the Cooling Environments Project. So if there's anybody out there that's interested in this position, we would uh, love to get you involved. And we also have an opening here uh, for uh, the advanced cooling facilities, right, which is focused on interconnecting the uh, row and racks into the larger data center. Um, so everything that kind of connects the facility level stuff down to the, the IT gear kind of gets filled into that ACF spot. So if anybody's interested in helping out in this space, we would really love to uh, um, get you involved, and we also have quite a few work streams that you're going to be hearing about over the next couple of days, and we could really use some help. Um, so if you see something, the work gets done, right, by the community. So anywhere that you seem interested, we would, we would love your help. And Jordan, let me turn this back over to you. Yeah, thanks, Steve. So, yeah. you know, looking at that, that high-level overview of cooling environments, right, it was put together a couple of years ago now to really drive this cross collaboration, right? How can cold plate and door heat exchanger work together or with immersion, with the facilities, with heat re reuse? Um, I think Michael Schill posted on LinkedIn at this summit, right? Like how do we drive this collaboration and scale this innovation with that cooperation or, or cooperation as he said it, right? Um, so I wanna just give, start out with 
just an overview of what the cold plate subproject vision is. Um, so when I went, went looking at OCP site, right, we want to align to what OCP's vision is, and you can find this blurb on their vision page. OCP's vision is to apply the benefits of open source and open collaboration to hardware to rapidly increase the pace of innovation. And that's really what Cold Plate's vision is as well, right? How do we scale innovation through collaboration? How do we drive standardization and really just ease adoption of liquid cooling and cold plate cooling in the industry? So with that high level overview, I just wanna give um, a quick update on the contributions that the community's brought forward since last year uh, and really show this collaboration that the community is putting together to develop these white papers and specifications. The first one here is a cold plate development and qualification white paper. So these, um, these ones in blue, you actually can go look at the contribution portal now uh, if you wanna see more details. But this was published late last year really defining the metrics of importance for a cold plate, what you need to consider, um, right, because this goal is to cool something, so you, whether it's flatness, how you test it, um, just all those key parameters, but making it processor agnostic to really help, you know, aid with that cooling. The other specification that came through cold plate and, and also um, some different collaborations was this large quick connector specification. So it was presented on last year um, and went through the whole review process, community review, IC review, and is up uh, published on the portal. Another one um, from Microsoft is this warm liquid cooled cloud facilities, looking at the different temperatures, what the trade-offs are, looking at the case studies and analysis there. Um, and then one that I think the, the community really is proud of and big props to um, Cam Turner and Philip Yu for driving this to completion, but the cold plate requirements revision two was just published, uh, I think on Friday last week. Um, so please do check that out. They'll be, they'll be giving a more in-depth deep dive summary on, on what that covers, what the value is, um, but really that was, as you'll see, huge collaboration across many, many different companies uh, to really define those requirements for cold plates. We have a couple more contributions in review. So there's um, kind of in parallel with that cold plate, what we traditionally think of as a cold plate was this passive loop heat pipe type solution. And the community talked and, and determined it was different enough technology that it, it deserved its own paper to talk about its own requirements, mirroring the type of um, structure that that cold plate requirements revision two had. So that is that is still in, in review. It's It's been reviewed a couple times in the community calls, um, but it is still wrapping up there. And then finally, a rack manifold design guideline, um, which will be presented on later. That is also in review. It's been discussed in the community calls, but looking at the key parameters, um, what's really required in cooling for a rack manifold. Next, I wanna talk about what the current work streams are. So we looked at kind of the past, and now I just wanna highlight some of the current work going on uh, before we look into the next stages and, and potential areas to go in the future. So first up, like I mentioned, the cold plate requirements work stream started out with um, Cam and, and some other folks in the industry driving this. Uh, it spun out that passive cold plate requirements. So, which is in that preliminary review, um, I can connect you with those folks if you're interested to, to see more, um, Ben, Sutton, and Vadim. And then finally, the ORV3 blind mate interfaces. There'll be more talks on the ORV3 as well, um, and I'm, I'm sure you guys saw the, the great demos set up at the Experience Center, uh, and there's, there's a lot of good contacts there, good collaboration there. Um, and there's a pretty in-depth preliminary design document and collaterals that are available on the Cold Plate Wiki. Looking forward to uh, some of the potential future activities, um, and here I really wanna emphasize that a lot of this is being built on past white papers, past contributions and collaboration throughout OCP. The first one here is leak detection and mitigation. So a number of years ago, the, the cold plate community put together a high level um, but comprehensive document on leak detection and mitigation in the data center and what needs to be considered. From there, um, we had a white paper, Brahanu wanted to move from Intel, presented last year on a case study. What do you actually need to consider? If you're putting it in a server, can you use off-the-shelf parts from different vendors and manufacturers, which you can, and looking at um, you know, what specific settings you want to put in for your leak detection and how to handle that. Going forward, right, looking to open that up, collaborate more with the community to 
to give a good solid case study and starting point so anyone can implement this going forward. The other one is a mobile fluid servicing cart. So a couple of years ago, Intel and Meta collaborated on the need for a, a fluid servicing cart in a liquid cooled data center. If you have fluid, you're going to need to service your racks. Um, and presented that at OCP with a white paper, and now there's work going on at Meta to develop specification a base spec or a specification specific for their use case, as well as a white paper, so anyone can develop, um, take those learnings of a mobile fluid servicing cart, what design parameters they need for their use case, and then apply it to their own design as needed. Finally, um, you've been talking to a lot of folks on, you know, how do you how do you test, how do you really understand how people's different components or um, systems compare to each other if people test differently? So there's been the kind of this growing need asked for, uh, can OCP develop a methodology to be a, a baseline testing methodology to compare these different products and components with? I think this is something that we really want to take on, but we'll definitely need a lot of help from the community to, to make this happen, right? Make it robust, make it something that can be adopted and help to scale that innovation. And then finally, um, if there's anything you see that could help benefit liquid cooling in the cold plate side, uh, please feel free to bring that forward. We have you know, monthly community calls and would love to hear that and get you involved and um, connected with the people that can help make that successful. Before closing, I want to just point out the different agenda items today. Um, these are some of the uh, workshops today in this room that if you're interested in cold plate, you'll be interested in seeing these. There's, of course, more after this uh, with door heat exchanger. Um, but just wanted to call out the first, the first block that, that's all pretty tightly related to this cold plate um, topic. So first, like I mentioned, um, right, this overview, and then going into the rack manifold design and, and looking at what those key parameters are. The next one, uh, Cam and Philip Yu will be talking about their cold plate uh, liquid, or sorry, cold plate loop requirements document, really looking at those key parameters, what interfaces you have to look at, um, all that good stuff, and then going into the ORV3 blind mate liquid cooling interfaces. Look, that's a closed work stream, um, so it'll be very interesting to see that update here at OCP, uh, as well as the, the cooling component update. And then finally, um, Jabari and Ryan will be looking at concurrent maintainability considerations. They've been doing a lot of work with uptime and then also coming and reviewing in the cold plate uh, community calls to make sure that that is a, um, a robust document as well. So with that, uh, the last call to action really is to get involved. So like Steve said, uh, there's, there's definitely help needed on the volunteer leadership side. I think there's also a lot of opportunity to bring your technical expertise into these papers, make sure that they're robust and that they're serving uh, the community as a whole and really um, is something that we can keep building on. And like I said, looking at white papers from a couple of years ago that then builds into specifications into more and more standardization, more and more adoption. Um, really, any, any knowledge sharing you have now will absolutely be built upon, and we can keep going with that. So please join. We have a, a monthly call, um, and we have the mailing list. You can scan that QR code if you haven't already, or just go to the, the OCP project uh, online and, and get on, on the mailing list, and we'll send out agendas, and you can, you can join when it's interesting. So please, please join to increase the pace of innovation. That's all I got. Thanks, everyone. Any questions? All right, thank you. If no questions, and we'll take a five minute break before the next. Yeah, we got about six starts. minutes, yeah. All right. Okay, super. Thanks, everybody. <laughs>